What's up everyone? Max here and welcome back to more Arcade Stories! A collection and telling of some arcade stories I had growing up and one of them that I'm going to be talking about today which is a little bit more recent. Uh, this is actually one of the more recent memories I have of an arcade that was pretty substantial and it was the rebirth of Street Fighter 4. So for you guys that don't know, Street Fighter was off the off the grid for quite a long time. Uh, the game we had prior to that was Capcom Fighting Evolution and that one wasn't so great but essentially, I played a lot of Capcom vs. SNK2, a lot of Third Strike, and a bit of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, because those were the three go-to Capcom games that everyone played. Especially in arcades, those were the three most popular ones. Now, after this, there was no Capcom fighting games really at all. That division of Capcom had kind of given things up, and lo and behold, there was this big announcement that Street Fighter's coming back. It's made by Yoshinori, Yoshinori Ono, and it's going to be hybrid 2D, 3D. Um, what was happening early was that I was taking every chance and opportunity I had to get my hands on this game because I wanted to be I wanted to be great at it. That was my that was my my desire back then was that I wanted to be really good at this game. So I'm going to take every chance and every opportunity I get. Went down to San Diego Comic Con like back in 2008. Played a bunch of it there with some tournaments. Met Seth Killian, met Sven at Capcom, and all these other guys. Um, then there was another opportunity at a Sneaker Pimps concert where. Conveniently, they were Capcom was there showcasing Street Fighter 4 in their Viewlix cabinets, and people could actually play each other. Uh, the funny thing is, you can find all these matches on, in the deep history of my uh, of the history of my videos on this channel. They're actually still there, and they're some of the first uploads I've had. Uh, and then after that, Street Fighter 4 finally showed up. I think in August or so of 2008, and it was at the uh, Super Arcade. The famous Super Arcade you guys know from Wednesday Night Fights is run by Mike Watson, now down in, uh, in Walnut, California. Um, so, this point, there was, this was the big transition where the fighting game community really started to change, where the names and faces of people became really apparent and you started to understand who you were actually playing against, because quite literally when it came to the names of all the big guys that were really good at Third Strike and really good at Street Fighter that I had known before, you have no idea who they actually are, because the resources of YouTube weren't that great back then, and the only way you could really do it is if you like dug through IRC channels or watched ComboVideo.com or things like that to actually watch some of these players go at it. So I didn't know the faces of these people at all. It's like I always questioned who Alex Valle actually was because the dude was a legend around the arcades that I went to, about like the best Ryu player there is, and I never knew who he actually was. The funniest thing is that when Street Fighter 4 came out, all the guys, all the Southern California pros from like Combo Fiend to Mike Ross to, to Gutex to Ed Ma, Alex Valle, I can just keep going on and on to um, Sextaro, all these people went down to uh, the beginning openings of Super Arcade where Street Fighter 4 was. Um, Super Arcade was there for a while, I mean, I mean, when Street Fighter 4 first showed up. And there were just so many people at this arcade, like, it, it's just mind-blowing, like, literally, like, 150 people, even more, just crammed around this machine. There would be lists, so you can actually play Street Fighter 4. Just people waiting and lined up for hours, and you had to get good at the game. Like, the people that got good at the game are the ones that can consistently win, and I was one of the few guys that was actually playing Ken in the game. Not many people were going to Ken, there was a lot of reviews. And there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of Ables as well, I remember back in the day. As well as some other guys, like, using a variety of characters. I met so many people that I had no idea who they were. I, I later go on to find out that I'm actually, you know, playing, like, you know, I'm playing Gutex, I'm actually playing Edma, I'm playing Alex Valle, and that's how I got to know these guys. Uh, it was because I was just at that arcade every chance I could possibly get. And playing the holy hell out of the game, so... It was, it's an interesting experience, like, being a part of something that was so big at the start, and then because Street Fighter 4 uh, was updated with Super Street Fighter 4, I kind of just, like, fell out of the competitive scene for that game, and just was like, eh, I think I'm kind of done. Uh, I made some combo videos early on for it, and that was about it. But those moments in the arcade were just absolutely amazing, meeting a ton of people, uh, being around so many people that were just jazzed and freaking so excited the fact that Street Fighter is coming back. Uh, it was, it's really unique. It definitely is something. Like, it even led to the point where at Family Fun Arcade, as you guys know from many videos that I've made now, uh, there we would host weekly tournaments, because Family Fun eventually got it about a month, or maybe a half month, after Super Arcade did. I'm like, this one's way closer, I'm gonna go down here all the time, and the lines were just as long to play that one. But they would do these things, like, if you got 20 wins in a row, they give you, like, a free soda or something, you know, from the concession stand that they have there, and you'd get your name on this, like, little wall of, like, you know, wall of fame of people that have consecutively gotten, like, 20 wins, because they were capping the win limit on these machines, like, 
Some places you can only win like three games in a row, and it costs like a dollar to play, and you had to like reset it, which was a total bummer. I also went to Dungeon Arcade, which was in uh, Simi Valley in California quite a bit, and they had they had Street Fighter Four cabinets as well, and I did, I did something similar down there. I wanted to go down there and set a win record, which was to get like 20 wins in a row, or something like that, and it was just... This thing of just traveling to all the places that had Street Fighter 4 and meeting all these people just consistently, you know, like Ultra David and James Chen, and it's like all these people now that are just fighting game superstars, and I kind of fell out of the limelight for a long time of that big group of people because I just kind of just got old of Street Fighter 4. There was some stuff that really bugged me about the game. I think I've explained that in many, many situations and regards. But this one time at Family Fun, uh, there was like a few arcades in like their Ranbat season that was early on, and there were the biggest of heavy hitters there. Like the, some of the best of the best were at this uh, were at this arcade in this tournament. I'm not too sure if the tournament is recorded. I know that if you go to getyourtournament.com, it might still be somewhere on the site recorded back from like 2008 at Family Fun Arcade, where it was me against. Um, Gosh, I can't remember the guy's name, but it was me against a Zangif, and I, I feel bad that I forget the guy's name because he's a dude that I played several arcade games with before uh, Family Fun, which is that Tilt Arcade in Valencia. He's a fellow, like, Marvel player and stuff like that. I think his name is Andre. Nonetheless, um, and this tournament had all the big hitters, and somehow I won. Like, I can't even remember the events of the tournament, but somehow in the end of it, I actually ended up winning the tournament, and it was pretty substantial like they're giving like I had to do like a couple interviews with people and stuff like that and that was actually really proud of that because I was going up against what I learned to be like the best of the best in the community and at that time that was back when uh, Ryan or Gutex was doing like the podcasts and stuff like that for Street Fighter 4 and everyone was paying attention because everyone wanted like a taste of this game even if they couldn't play it so I'm gonna read a quick excerpt from this Cap Community blog post I made about four, four, over four years now. And I'm just gonna go over this really quick and highlight some of the moments that I think are pretty important. I'll leave a comment, uh, I'll comment in the, uh, in the comments section or the video description so you guys can actually read this about like the crazy passion I was having about this game when it first came out. So, here we go. It's titled Street Fighter 4, the arcade scene at Super Arcade. It would seem that I've had the best of luck when it comes to Street Fighter 4. It all began at the Fight Club where my addiction began, leading me to San Diego Comic Con and the Sneaker, Pimp Con Sneaker Pimps concert to play more. I'm under a small minority of people who have actually had the chance to play Street Fighter 4 amongst like hundreds and thousands of Street Fighter fans across America. But luckily, my, my strange luck continues, and it received the game at Super, uh, Super Arcade and Walnut, which was the very first place in the U.S. to receive an arcade cabinet. Now, this was completely different. This was a completely different beast. The machines are not the usual Vulix cabinets you were used to seeing at all the prior events. The owner of Super Arcade purchased just the Street Fighter 4 arcade boards and put them into some smaller Japanese non HD cabinets. This took some getting used to. The game presented in HD is much different looking than the SD cabs we're playing on. Of course, it's not as graphically impressive, but it's still pretty. What took me for surprise is the zoomed out old school Street Fighter 2 view on the SD machines, and not the super zoomed in HD characters. You can clearly see the difference, and it took a while to adjust and flesh out the game. Here's another shot of the cabinet, which you guys can see on the page. And Ghetto, sorta, could it be better? Yeah, but it's absolutely zero room to complain. I'm playing Street Fighter 4 in a jam-packed arcade with loads of people months before the game even comes out. Awesome. Due to the popularity all over the internet, the place has been jam-packed with people for two straight days, and the original cost of 50 cents went up to 75, and the crowd still grows. With many people arriving to see the new Street Fighter 4 in action, I was approached by literally hundreds of people waiting to understand the new focus attack system. Since the game is publicly available now, I really wanted to flesh out this focus attack system even more to see what it really can do. The remainder of the videos can also be seen at the end of my channel, but the best thing about this is the whole experience is that Street Fighter finally feels alive again, and everyone wants in on the action. I'm a longtime Third Strike player, but bringing back Street Fighter to its roots was the perfect way to bring in a bigger audience. The opportunity to show people new examples of the focus attack and the new aspects of Street Fighter 4 is one of the best parts of the arcade scene. There's this unity between all the players surrounding the arcade machine in the middle of California, wanting to learn something to get better, to learn more. I met up with a lot of folks from the ShoreYouCan.com community who have some beastly Able and Dalsam players, and hope to run into anyone else that's reading this. If you run into me, I'm the dude with the blonde ponytail playing Ken, and if I continue to have the luck that I had last night, then I might be able to beat my 49 win streak. Take care, fellow Street Fighters, and I'll see you in the arcades. Uh, this was this was back when it was that its biggest, like the arcade scene just felt revitalized because Street Fighter 4 was in the arcades before, 
And reading this, it kind of, I kind of remember it. I remember sharing this passion with people, and it's kind of the same thing I felt when I started making the Assist Me series, which is kind of what it's all about, about teaching people and having people understand something and relating to people. Um, I think that's one of the most important factors is teaching the new guys. And it's funny to, to look back, because I forgot about this, to look back at this old article I wrote and realize that, wow, I was actually doing this a long time ago, like roaming around arcades, it looks like. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. This has been another Arcade Stories, and if there is a specific arcade game or something that you would like me to tell a story about, there's a good chance there might be something in my memory with that game. My name is Max, and I'll see you guys next time.